Uh, Stella, uh, one thing we did miss from the by-election bell is that, of course, this is a free hit against the government. And do you think this is a wider movement where people say, right, we really want a Labour government? The results would point to the fact that people really, really want a Labour government, even in former safe Tory seats. Or is this by-election rules apply, as we heard from Jacob Rees-Mogg at 3.40 this morning? Uh, I won't go into his comments, but it was about how he used to lecture people about... Oh, I'm going... He, apparently, Jacob Rees-Mogg used to lecture people about by-election results at the age of 12, he said on the... <laughs> which, I can, which I can believe. Yes, absolutely. Um, but it's but is this course. normal by-election result, or, or is this something bigger? That is absolute nonsense, and I think it's such a big excuse to, to suggest that every by-election that happens, uh, that it doesn't really matter because it's a by-election and all of that. I'm sorry, but some people did go and vote there, and we actually have... I know that it's anecdotal evidence, and obviously we cannot go and ask every voter personally in these two constituencies, but you do have uh, uh, voters who have even said, I've never voted for any other party apart from the Conservatives my entire life. I haven't even voted for Tony Blair when he was in government, and we know how many Tory voters switched to Tony Blair during the new Labour years. And now I'm voting for Keir Starmer because yeah. that's enough. The country has had enough. The cost of living, the NHS crisis, all of these things are weighing really heavily on people. OK. And, and Matthew, you know, if you look at what Richard Holden said there, what, from what he... He had a tricky wicket yeah. to play on. It's not, but, an, easy, you know, it's not an easy wicket. Look, was any, did, did, you, did, did you have any sympathy for it? What would your criticism be of that sort of, you know, attempt to, to gloss well, over? you know, I mean, poor Richard, he's been, probably been up all night, but I think he, there wasn't much humility there. Um, uh, and I think that the Tories need to be uh, pretty humble in listening to these results, which were absolutely terrible. In Wellington, he didn't answer the question, which is how many Tory MPs would be left. Now, this wouldn't happen... Do you know? Been, I do. Come it's on. four. It's four. Mm. All apparently, the best. Okay. So, Jake Barry in here. Yeah, you be the leader. <laughs> apparently, one of the Tory MPs that went up there to, to, to campaign had to, to, to retire to the pub with the Reform Party activists at the end of the So, the that, end of the that was part session. of the story. So, it wasn't just a terrible night for the Conservatives, which it was. It's a pretty good night for pretty reform. Good night yeah. They haven't got reform. above 3% in other by-elections. Mm. They got about 10% in both of these. Mm. And that's a massive problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because... John Curtis today said that only half of voters going to reform are from the Conservative mm. Party, that well-known election anal analyst, sophologist, uh, John Curtis. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if half of Tory voters, uh, you know, 5% yeah. of their 10% are former Tory voters, there's, there's, there's no route going, to victory, no, is there? Absolutely. This is only going to go up as we're, as we're moving closer to a general election because obviously we're talking about the, re the Reform Party now. There will be a lot of voters out there who haven't heard of this before mm. and now they're hearing about this more and more and come election and day... And crucially, yes, because one thing is that things like being included in the debates mm. depends on your electoral performance mm. and now they're clearly coming well, third. The, B the BBC Queens, in particular, B which sets B the thing, we'll have to take seriously. Gems. Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, and, and so I think, you know, you'll be seeing the, 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 the Reform, you know, get you get stuck in people's minds. One of the interesting things, of course, is that because more people... Because not all the Reform voters are Tories, which some commentators think, as John Curtis says, no. it means that if some Labour voters splintered off to Reform, some traditional Brexity Labour voters, it means that to Labour to win, there had to have been extra switches straight from the Tories. Mm. Well, there you go. Matthew Lazar's analysis. We're doomed. <laughs> right. There is a by-election taking place in Rochdale. We've spoken about it today. It's on the 29th of February. And if you live in that constituency, you have 11 candidates to choose from. You have uh, Azar Ali who was the former Labour Party candidate, but the Labour Party has officially withdrawn support. Mark Coleman, an independent. Simon Danchuk, standing for Reform UK. In Donaldson, Liberal Democrat. Paul Ellison, standing for the Conservatives. George Galloway, standing for the Workers' Party of Britain. Michael Howarth, an independent. William Howarth, an independent. Guy Oaten for the Green Party. Raven Rodent Subortina for the official monster raving loony party. And David Tully. And, of course, you can go and vote for any of them.